Welcome to winter, a skier's landscape, a skier's playground. Ski technique is your passport into this cold, white, beautiful world. It's not an end in itself. There's only one reason to practice and perfect our ski technique, so that then we can forget it and really ski. Here's another good practice pattern you can use, the hockey stop. Hockey stops are easy. Just twist both skis across your body and skid to a stop, while you remain facing down the hill. Even better, link a number of these hockey stops from one side to the other, pivoting your feet in between the skids. These linked pivot slips, as I call them, are just like turns with anticipation only with a cruder turning action. But they're a very good way to reinforce the feeling of floating passively along above active legs and skis. If you're thinking this has been a very quick and superficial review of how we link short turns with dynamic anticipation, well, you're right. This is a very big part of expert skiing and one-third of the first Breakthrough on Skis tape is devoted to mastering this subtle skill. Do it now, before you tackle bumps. What I'm doing on this smooth groomed slope is really bump skiing without any bumps. If this feels comfortable, you're ready. Okay, how does all this work in real bumps? Easy, efficient bump turns have two critical parts. A slow, patient, anticipated start somewhere up near the top of the bump and a strong but delayed finish well below the actual bump itself, which leaves us anticipated and ready for the start of the next turn. The key words are slow start and delayed finish. But even in slow motion this is hard to follow. So let's look closer with stop action. Here I'm anticipated on top of the bump ready to start my turn. I let my skis unwind smoothly down the hill not a sudden pivot crosswise to the bump. And I continue turning smoothly around the bump finishing below it. But the finish is actually the start of the next turn. I'm anticipated, ready to go. Once again, a slow start, letting my skis unwind from the anticipated position, dropping all the way below the bump before finishing this turn. In a word, I'm skiing around the bumps, not straight into them. Here's another view of the relaxed, slow start. I want to get my skis into the fall line no farther and not finish the turn until I drop below the bump. Here's the slow start. Here's the delayed finish. By contrast,
To complete our understanding of how bump turns really work, let's look at each part, the start and the finish, in a little more detail. Here's what I call the crest of a bump. There's no single right spot to start your turn, but you do want to turn as your feet pass over this crest. Why? When I stand here on the crest of a bump, the tips and tails of my skis are in the air, and I can pivot them easily, with no resistance. This is what happens as I cross a bump, pivot my feet slightly, and drop into the fall line. Here we see the same effect in motion, and now in a close-up view. Another way to say the same thing is this. Start your turns as the snow drops away. It takes less effort. Here, watch how I start each turn on the crest of a bump. And here, Jim Taylor does the same thing, turning as the snow drops away under his skis. Okay, now you know where to start your bump turns. Let's look at how and where we finish our turns below each bump. Basically, you have two choices. You can take the first exit the bump offers you and turn downhill again as fast as possible. Or you can prolong the arc of your turn, often guiding your skis back uphill over the next bump to the side. I call these two choices the fast exit and the slow exit from a bump. Here is a graphic representation of the two lines, the two exits, the two choices you face at the end of every bump turn. This red line represents the fast exit, the shorter line. Essentially, it's the path that water would follow if it were flowing around the bump and taking the first exit out of the gully at the bottom. The blue line shows a slower, more patient alternative, the longer exit. It simply means that you keep your skis turning longer in that generally smooth area between two bumps. Here's one way of looking at the fast exit line. As soon as I come around the bump, I plant my pole and turn down the hill into the first available gully. And here's the slow exit. I keep my turn going, steering my skis farther around, over the next bump to the side. This is the slower path, and this is how you can ski bumps as slowly as you want to. Now, let's look at the same two exits in super slow motion. First, the fast line. As soon as I come around the bump, I'm looking for the first possible spot to turn downhill again. And the slow exit line. This time I keep my turn going, wrapping my skis up and around over the next bump. It's the same old story. I complete my turn to slow down. And again, two more views. Here's the fast exit line contrasted with the slower line completing the arc of my turn. This is a subtle but tremendously important point. Are you starting to see it? It takes time. Your choice of a line through the bumps and your speed, very slow or very fast, depend on where you exit your turn. Look at a few more turns with me now and see if you can spot the fast exit lines versus the slow exit lines. Here I choose the fast exit from each turn, a nice way to ski when speed control isn't an issue. And in this run I do the exact opposite. I complete the arc of each turn, a slow, patient way to ski bumps 
what I've called the slow exit or slow line. Most of the time, of course, I mix it up, taking the long exit or the short exit for each bump as the spirit moves me or as the terrain dictates. Depending on whether I feel lazy or aggressive, depending on how steep and challenging the slope is or how easy. Of course, competitive mogul skiers always take the fast line. They have no desire to slow down, quite the contrary. But I do, and I suspect you do too, at least some of the time. And now you know how, by finishing your turn underneath the bump. Okay, that's enough theory. Now that you understand bumps, our next job is to learn to ski them. Let's start with terrain. Find a gentle slope of incipient bumps, just the beginnings of bumps, easier than those we're panning over right now. I call such baby bumps bimps, and I want you to practice the timing of the start of your bump turns here, far from any crisis. All I'm doing is pivoting my feet ever so slightly as I cross over the high spot or crest of these incipient bumps, and that's it. My skis respond with very slight turns, slight changes of direction, following the slightly curved, hollow shape already there in the snow in front of me. The purpose of this exercise, and that's all it is, an exercise, is twofold. I want you to tune in to the split second when your feet pass the crest of each mini bump. That's the moment when a very small foot pivoting action can have the maximum result. And second, I want you to feel how the rounded, gully-like shapes in the snow are actually steering your skis for you. I just mentioned a small foot pivoting action on the crest of the bump. But don't forget our old friend, Anticipation. A small twist of the foot may start your turn, but Anticipation will make it easy. Here's another demonstration of what I mean. Watch how easily my skis follow my anticipated body as it tilts down the hill. As you arrive at the crest of the bump, your skis and legs are completing the previous turn. Maximum Anticipation. The rest is unwinding, letting the skis follow the body down the hill. What's next? We're ready now to work on the end of the turn, what I've called the delayed finish. But it's hard just to wait until your skis have dropped below the bump before actively finishing your turn. So here's a game you can play to build this habit, build this patience. I call these hesitation turns. They're easy. Start a turn, go straight, then finish. Start your turn, hesitate, then finish. Naturally, I'd like you to practice these hesitation turns on a smooth, groomed slope. This is not good skiing per se. The idea is simply to defuse any tendency we might have to rush into the end of our turn. And now, back into the bumps. Not tiny bimps anymore, but just slightly bigger bumps, letting our skis take all the time they need to come around, not rushing it. This is an important part of our strategy. Gently, steadily, increasing the difficulty of our bumps, bit by bit. Avoiding the big hard bumps until we're ready for them. If it doesn't feel perfectly comfortable yet, and it won't, that's because we still need to add something. I'm talking about pole action. Your poles serve to synchronize your movements with the shape of the bumps. 
like this. In bumps, I'm constantly reaching down the hill with the pole that I'm about to use. Reaching straight downhill helps keep my body anticipated, makes me face more or less down the hill. But as soon as my legs and skis begin to pivot, a new hand and pole come into play. Reaching like this from the very start of each turn moves my whole body forward and down the hill so I don't get left behind when my skis accelerate downhill on the far side of each bump. It's only a small cocking of the wrist, but it is crucial. Get the basket of your pole ahead of you, early. And don't think reaching with your pole is just a learning strategy. Skilled bump skiers are constantly flicking their poles ahead of them, as these images show. We'll spend more time with these gifted bump skiers in a while. My point is simple, use your poles. Get the new pole ahead fast, as I'm doing here. If your pole is ready, you'll be ready to turn again as soon as the bumps give you the opportunity. If your pole isn't ready, you'll miss that turn. It's all about flow. Continuous turns down the hill, no pauses, no breaks. But so far we've talked mainly about individual turns. How do you put together long, satisfying bump runs? The answer is twofold. You need effective speed control, so you don't just go faster and faster, from turn to turn, until you blow up. And you need a good sense of your line a feeling for how to thread the best possible path through this white obstacle course of bumps. Let's begin with speed control. And let's begin with our old friend, side slipping. That's right, side slipping through bumps as an exercise only. Side slip to the crest of one bump, pivot, and side slip to the crest of another bump. Gentle, friendly bumps, please. But why bother? It's a confidence builder to realize that you can drift down through the bumps at very, very slow speeds. But this certainly isn't good skiing. Now we're going to try to keep our feet loose and relaxed in more normal, rounded bump turns and feel how our skis can side slip just a bit all the time. The result will be a much slower run. Here I ski the same bumps three times with different degrees of side slipping. This is a lot of side slipping. Too much, really. And here I let my skis slide a bit toward the end of every turn, which brings me almost to a stop. Finally, these next turns seem more or less normal, except that my feet are so relaxed that now my skis are brushing the snow, not edging and carving and this produces a generally slower run through the bumps. Watch this side slipping effect in action. Because I want to ski a little slower this run, I let my skis slip or brush sideways between the bumps. It works. Of course, you may not want to slow down, and with experience and confidence, your threshold for comfortable speed in the bumps will increase. But I'm convinced you'll do better at first if you have the option of a slower run. At the other end of the spectrum is bump skiing without any skidding or side slipping at all. Carved turns through the bumps. It's very beautiful. It's also very technical and demanding. Kim McDonald is an Aspen instructor and a former nationally ranked downhill racer. She has a wonderful ability to keep her skis carving through the most abrupt changes in terrain. I want you to admire the way Kim's skis carve through these bumps. But don't get discouraged if you can't do it for a while. A little side slipping can be a big plus at first. 
An even more important factor in speed control, however, is finishing your turn. That long exit line from the bump we talked about earlier. You remember the difference between the short line, the one I'm skiing here, essentially an unfinished or only partially finished turn, and the long line that I'm going to demonstrate now, where I bring my skis around as far as possible beneath the bump. Real life bump skiing, of course, involves both. You let your skis flow downhill like water, whenever you're not going too fast, whenever it feels good, whenever there's nowhere else to go. But if you want to slow down, then right away you throw in one or several fully completed turns. Real life bump skiing also takes place in real life bumps. Like these. They're not perfectly shaped, not regular or rhythmic. So you must constantly adjust your line, take advantage of attractive shapes, and avoid the ugly ones. And this is the way I did it on one run filmed here at half speed. A couple of short turns to enter, and then I decide to change my line by moving to the side. But still, it looks like short turns, and a couple more quick exit lines brings me to a zone of bigger, more rhythmic bumps where perhaps I can round my turns out and follow the long exit line. I do. This is a very natural section of this run, but like all good things, it comes to an end. And I'm back in a zone of less well-formed bumps. So now it's time for a couple of quick short ones. I change line once again, moving to the side, and I'm still using the short exit line as I finish this zone of smaller bumps. It's different every time. You can't plan a whole bump run from above, but you can and should look for the first couple of turns. You can also try this trick. Break your bump runs down into short, manageable sections. Here I'm skiing three turns and then I'll come to a stop. Next time you ski this slope, ski five turns or six or seven turns before you stop stretching it out each time called absorption watch Jerry Berg former member of the US demo team and now head of training for the ski schools at Aspen fly through these bumps Jerry enjoys skiing bumps very fast remember the film you're seeing is half Jerry's actual speed every time Jerry hits a bump there's a shock a shock that he absorbs by flexing his legs like a pair of shock absorbers on a car. But that's only half the story. Skilled bump skiers focus even more on stretching their legs back out once they've been compressed or flexed in order to have the full length of their legs available to absorb the shock of the next bump. Watch Jerry's knees come up, absorbing the shock of this bump. Now his legs are re-extending downward to fill up the hollow space between the bumps. And here, his knees flex up again, absorbing the second shock in a row. And as he comes off this bump at high speed, launched into the air, Jerry stretches downward again to regain contact with the ground and stretch out his legs, his shock absorbers, so their full length is available once more to compress, absorbing the shock of this next bump. It's a process that can go on and on and on as long as you have the strength, the quickness, and the timing. Jerry does. Here's another view of absorption. A different skier, a different style. Kim McDonald flexes deeply as she hits the crest of these sharply dug out bumps, then quickly extends her legs down into the side to fill up the hollow space between the bumps so she can do it again, fast and fluidly. Remember, you can't just keep flexing lower and lower and lower from bump to bump. You have to stretch out to stand back up 
each time you absorb the shock of a bump. If you ski the long, slow line around bumps, you don't encounter as many shocks. You don't use as much absorption, but you still use it. So even though you may not need much absorption for a while, here are a few tips for dealing with the extra shock of abrupt bumps or faster than normal runs. First, keep your back straight. With a vertical back, you can flex your legs deeply. But if you break at the waist, it seems to tighten muscles through your legs that keep you from flexing very much. Now, run straight across some bumps with very loose legs. Let your muscles give and your legs flex when the bump pushes up beneath you. That's the passive part of absorption. Now, pick a comfortable but abrupt bump and practice the other half, extending your legs once you've passed the crest of that bump. Here's the flexing to absorb the shock of a sharp bump. And here's the re-extension that will let my legs absorb the next shock to come along. Absorb, re-extend. Absorb and extend. Remember, absorption is not a universal technique something you add to each and every bump turn. Instead, it's a skier's response to the sudden pressure of a bump underfoot. Use it only when you need it, but not necessarily in every turn. What's next? I'd say that's about it. You already have the basics. The rest is a matter of practice and perseverance. Paying your dues, then improvising. Slowly pushing your limits to see where your limits really are. Bumps are an open-ended challenge. There's always a harder, faster, fiercer line waiting for you if you want to accept that challenge. If not, just relax and play. A relaxed, anticipated start, a delayed finish, and strong rhythmic pole action are your keys to easy, pleasurable bump skiing. It doesn't have to be a battle. But let's end our video apprenticeship in the bumps with a couple of images of high drama.